cancer is not a genetic disease, uh, then, then what can explain uh, the dysregulated growth uh, of tumors uh, of, of certain cells to become cancerous? And that had been clearly defined and described many years ago by the uh, famous German uh, biochemist and physiologist, Dr. Otto Warburg, uh, back in the 1920s when he first realized that all cancer cells, regardless of what their tissue of origin is, they show a propensity to uh, have a, redu a reduction in the amount of oxygen consumed and an elevated amount of, uh, of a sugar waste product called lactic acid dumping out of the tumor cells. And he said that um, there was a two-step process by which a normal cell would become a tumor cell with dysregulated growth. One, step number one, was a chronic disruption of the ability of the cell to efficiently make energy, ATP, which is ultimately responsible for life. Without ATP, uh, nothing can survive. Um, so, so energy is key. Without energy, you don't live. So where is the energy coming from in tumor cells? And what, what Otto Warburg showed was that all major cancers have a reduction in the amount of oxygen consumed uh, rel relative to normal cells, which is normally higher. But chronic disruption of that ability to use oxygen for energy in the mitochondrion of the cell gradually, as step two, led to a compensatory protracted replacement of energy from oxidative phosphorylation dependent on oxygen to energy from a non-oxygen dependent system called fermentation. And that was uh, what he referred to as lactic acid fermentation, where lactic acid was a waste product of this fermentation pathway. And uh, uh, the more that oxygen was reduced and the more lactic acid that was uh, uh, produced uh, led to a dysregulated cell growth because we now know that the regulation of quiescence and division is controlled by the mitochondrion of the cell. And when that organelle becomes corrupted gradually, the cell, in order to survive and produce energy, falls back on ancient fermentation pathways. And when I say they're ancient, these are the same pathways that existed in all living cells, cells um, before oxygen came into the atmosphere 2.3 billion years ago. So at that time, all cells were fermenters. There was no oxygen in the, in the environment. When photosynthesis happened, then you had oxygen and you could uh, proceed with evolutionary biology. But the cancer cells are simply falling back on these ancient fermentation pathways, leading to a dysregulated cell growth. And, we'll, 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 so, and what we find is that we have been un unable to find any tumor cell that does not have abnormalities in the number structure and function of the mitochondria. This seems to be the, the, sig the, 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 the primary problem and the common pathophysiological mechanism in all cancers, regardless of where they come from, is this dependency on a fermentation metabolism. And as I'll discuss later, we see the waste products of that, which is in the form of lactic acid and another uh, acid, succinic acid, which is the waste product of a glutamine fermentation. So what's ha what, which means glutamine is an amino acid. So the cancer cells are actually fermenting, you generating non-oxidative energy from two different fuels. One is the glucose producing lactic acid. The other one is succinic acid produced from the, the amino acid glutamine. And the cancer cells continue to produce these fermentation waste products even in 100% oxygen. So clearly this is telling us that all cancer cells, regardless of where they're coming from, have a dependency on glucose and glutamine fermentation driving their dysregulated cell growth. What's more, by ha not having a, 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 a structurally functional mitochondria, they cannot use fatty acids or ketone bodies because you need good mitochondria to burn fatty acids and ketones. And cancer cells accumulate massive amounts of lipid droplets in the cytoplasm. The lipid droplets are there because there's a back, they cannot be metabolized for energy. And if they are, that could kill the tumor cells. So the tumor cells accumulate lipid drops in the cytoplasm because the mitochondria are defective, thereby forcing the cell to depend on a fermentation. So the respiratory fuels are being stored that in the cytoplasm because they cannot be used for energy. So this now tells us how we can kill and manage cancer cells. We have to restrict the fermentable fuels, glucose and glutamine, while transitioning the whole body off to ketone bodies and fatty acids, which our normal cells can use, but the tumor cells can't.